Hello everyone, uh, now we're moving on to part four. Uh, sorry about part three there, I think it got kind of cut off when I was doing the little upload thing, and I don't want to go back and have to redo all that, so I'm just going to kind of continue kind of where I left off. The good news is we got things pretty well set up. So now it's time to start actually considering what this mission is going to run like. And the first thing I want to do is set up the CIS and make sure everything is ready to go for them as far as, you know, the airstrike and the kind of things going off in the background. Now, uh, when I was playing with this a little bit earlier, I discovered that our poor little Sukhoi 24 is here. Uh, let's go grab them real quick and cross the dart. Uh, they had the problem that they are basically long range bombers, which means that unfortunately what they're going to do is they're literally going to fly over here all the way into the dead of Syria and get themselves slaughtered by the Syrian Air Force and Air Defense, which isn't cool if you ask me again you can decide how this would have gone completely on yourself the other thing you have to think about too is keep in mind that nato is going to be helping us out this whole time as well so maybe it's not as bad as i think it's going to be maybe it's going to be worse i don't actually know so we can always set it up and give it a try real quick so i've got everything all set up basically what it is i created a couple missions i've got one mission where we're going to be launching basically everything at the chemical weapons factories and of course i have some support units as well so i'm going to go ahead and unpause I'll speed up time a little bit and we're going to watch kind of how things play out now this is the part of the scenario where the fun starts i'm sure you're sitting there going man it was uh, really tedious working through and having to build each and every one of those air bases and make sure everything's set correctly unfortunately you have to do that if you're going to have a pretty good scenario and again smaller scenarios take a lot less time to construct so you want to kind of be thinking about that a little bit itself by the way if you probably noticed a bunch of aircraft got just got shot down and you're probably wondering what was that about well like i was warning you before we have uh, nato here and they're just going to shoot down everything yep like i said so we already need to start thinking about oh there's another one so nato is just going to sit here and literally shoot down oh my gosh look at that yeah, that's got to be terrible. Anyway, let's take a look at how things are going with Russia. So these are Sukhoi 24Ms. Uh, they're in a bad, 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 bad place because what they're basically going to do is fly right over the air defense zone and get themselves completely shot down, which is going to almost be a waste of everybody's time kind of a thing. Uh, meanwhile, of course, so we have everybody else who's uh, come ripping in here. We have the Sukhoi 27s. They ran out of fuel and had to refuel. Uh, that doesn't work very well. All these poor Sukhoi 24s are all going to get shot down. Keep in mind, this is really our fault as NATO because we're not actually helping them out so they're just uh, it, it's gonna end so poorly oh what's this hey look at that there's one of those cruise missiles we ordered up a little while ago bam okay so that did not work very well at all and again we want to take a look at ways to improve this so re-enter a scenario again i don't know why it's interested in staring at the ground there but that's fine too and we'll go ahead and play with things uh first thing i want to do actually today is i'm actually going to go into syria and i'm going to create a, an exclusion zone for them and basically this is going to allow them to automatically classify enemy contacts as soon as they cross their international or their you know their borders basically all right that looks pretty good to me let's go ahead in mission editor we'll go ahead uh, exclusion zone create new looks good anybody who crosses that line is considered hostile all right that looks good to me actually that looks really good to me i like that good i'm gonna go ahead and save that real quick i'm gonna go ahead and save our scenario real quick and now i'm gonna rethink how we're gonna handle the cis real quickly i could be using russian federation instead of cis but i decided to be a little bit more inclusive here so what are we gonna do i'm thinking of taking those Sukhoi 24 is this group right here and come up with something else that we could do with them. For example, I could assign them all to be escorts, which actually is not a bad idea, to be honest, because that would simplify things. Because again, in that case, we're basically supporting the tuple of 22s, which is not a bad idea if you think about it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do that. Switch these like this. I'm going to go ahead and just reassign them real quickly. We'll set them to be escorts, and I'm actually pretty happy with that. That's going to work. For, that's going to work a lot better, you'll see. Now, the next thing I want to think about too is Russia is basically targeting the chemical plants, which is what us and NATO is going to be doing too. Which means, from a player perspective, we might not have anything to do. So let's find out what exactly happens here, and I will make a decision on that. I just saved a moment ago, by the way. Pretty much every time you twitch your hand, you have to press Control S in this when you're making scenarios. And it's always good to version your scenarios, too, so it makes it a little bit simpler to build. So here comes our tuple of 22s. You can actually grab these during testing and move them if it makes your life a little bit simpler. But again, I like to kind of see how things play out. Notice, by the way, the scenario is running great. 
And one of the reasons it's running so well is we took so much time to replace so many of those ground units with those single unit airports. Again, if the airports were supposed to be a target, we could have built them out individually, which would have been fine as well. But like I said, that's really, really going to kill us as far as performance goes. And the concentration here in this mission is basically attack those chemical targets. Now, remember what I was saying earlier with the cruise missiles, basically winning the scenario automatically. So if you want it to be more sandboxy, of course, you could just leave those in, in which case you could choose whether or not to use the cruise missiles. But as you're going to see in about two seconds, oh man, there's a lot of flights up here. Um, basically, what's going to happen is our two Polyv 22s are going to fire, and that's going to be the end of that mission. Because they're going to, there they go. There's one. There's another one. Ooh. And off go the cruise missiles. And that is the end of the scenario as far as we're concerned. Yep, looks like every single one of those cruise missiles succeeded. A couple didn't, a couple didn't, I take it back. Uh, some of them got shot down. And that's it. Nicely done. Nicely done. Let's actually see how that worked. So uh, they lost five out of the nine chemical plants to those cruise missile strikes. So I'm not going to lie, I'm actually okay with that. I know that sounds kind of weird, but what I will do, I'm going to reopen the scenario again. I'm going to set it so those tuple of 22s only carry a single cruise missile each. You know, it's a very subtle change, but it's a change that's going to really dramatically change how effective they're going to be. So let's go back up to Angles, and let's go ahead and reduce their loadout. Again, this is just a quick and easy way to fix this problem. Beautiful. So now they can't do as much damage, leaving us and NATO with something to do. Yes! Everybody contributes to my scenario. Equal opportunity. All right, let's go back to NATO real quick. So NATO is in pretty good shape here. So I don't really need to change any of the elements of NATO, but we can also start experimenting a little bit to see just how effective the Syrian air defense is going to be. So what I'm going to do is put together basically a fake airstrike, see how bad it is, and then go in and change any loadouts that I need. And then we'll start looking at scripting and things like that. All right, so let's go ahead and see chemical facilities. So we're going to say Control F11. Give me Gary Oldman. Let's do land strike. For those of you who see Leon and the Professional, you'd understand where I'm coming from. Uh, let's see here. Give me everybody. Except I don't need helicopters. Anything else I don't need in this group? Okay, this thing's going to explode when I click it, so I'm actually going to click that. I'm going to do off-axis attack as well. That looks good, that looks good, that looks good. Man, this would be such a project to coordinate. I wouldn't even want to imagine. Obviously, we don't need the Greyhounds, and we don't need the E2s, which I'm pretty sure I grabbed by accident. Uh, we need those, we need those, we need those. Uh-oh. Apparently we left a couple aircraft out, but that happens all the time. All right, looks good, looks good, looks good. All right, let's do it. So these guys are going to be strikers. These guys are going to be escorts. These guys are going to be escorts. These guys are going to be strikers. Escorts. This is going to be escorts. That's not even going to be enough, trust me. These guys are going to be escorts. Tornadoes, clearly going to be escorts. Strike Eagles, you're going to be strikers. Your fighter typhoons, you're going to actually be doing the job. These group are going to be escorts. Tornado GR1s, you are going to be escorts. EA2s, you're going to be escorts. Yikes. Super Hornets, you're going to be doing the deed. Super Hornets, you're going to be escorts, I believe. Nope, yes, you're all escorts. Bam. Now that's what I call an alpha strike. I think this scenario has already gotten too big, to be honest. But again, let's try it and see what happens, right? So one thing I want to do real, real quickly, again, this is just from experience. I'm just going to do weapon release. I'm going to tell them not to waste the stupid harms. I hate it when they do that. Let's see here. Harms. Okay, you're allowed to fire one. No more. Because otherwise they're just going to waste them. And that's going to be awful. Because there's going to be so many air defense units attacking us. It's going to be a waste of our time. All right, so we have the alarms as well. We'll go ahead and add those. Close, close. All right, prepare for lag. Go. <laughs> Come get some. And I already see that their missiles have been launched and we're already being engaged. So let me make things a little bit simpler. Let's grab our carry battle group here, our action group. Let's turn their radars on. I know that's naughty, but they have NCTR on these carriers. So they can actually identify the aircraft very, very quickly. And then they can automatically make it much, much simpler for all of our strikers to do what our strikers are going to do. And here comes the fireworks. Wow, that slowed things down nicely. 
Look at how many aircraft there are. <laughs> I think this is a complexity three scenario if I had to uh, guess so far. Again, I just like to let it rip. Don't touch it. Don't, don't touch it. Just let it do its thing. By the way, all these little question marks are all SAM batteries that were identified by the Eurofighter's really, really, really good radar system. Oh, we're getting yelled at. Oh, you knew that was coming. Remember when I said that we're trying to keep the lag of the scenario down by reducing the number of units? There might be a very powerful lesson which you're learning right here. Oh man, just listen to those sound effects. It's crazy. Fan song. Yeah, those are all attacking all the strike radars. And I'm actually a little disappointed here, because from serious perspective, anybody across the line is automatically hostile, which means they're going to get engaged. And since we're dealing with clear skies today, they're going to have no difficulty in the slightest identifying things. Remember, by the way, Russia's launched their aircraft as well, so we don't want to accidentally engage them. <laughs> this is so great to watch. Reduce my volume considerably here. Oh man, look at that. Oh my gosh, look at all the harms. <laughs> ah, that's so crazy. Interesting thing is the Syrian Air Force doesn't seem to be that present here, which means when we did that mission activation, we might have had to have done it sooner. So that's again another consideration we need to do right away. And again, there's nothing stopping us from grabbing our Ohio class and just launching a wall of tomahawks at Syria. And again, that's something you want to think about when you're designing the scenario itself. And again, I'm just trying to get a feel for everything's playing out here. Straight flush, that's a very, very long range radar. Now, one thing you could do is you could actually come here and do one of these things. Because uh, when you do this, now they're just free targets. So now anybody who can launch can launch at them. You're also going to get things like uh, Tomahawk launches. Well, look at how many. Oh my god, oh, there's the rest of the Syrian Air Force. <laughs> look at this. This is absurd. Yep, this would be a great use for Command PE, by the way. Put it on, I think, what is it, Command Line mode or something like that, and just, like, let it rip. Because uh, this is just, like, oh, this is nutty. Uh, he's obviously hostile. Kill it. And again, if you design your mission carefully, you shouldn't have an issue. These guys all launched, and they're landing already. That was an easy mission. They just sort of took off, got to about 100 feet, and launched, and got one away. Ooh, let's take a look. Nah, that's a Smirch. That is not a friendly radar. Smirch comes off MiG-25, if I recall correctly. Look at how many... Oh my gosh, look at the missiles. I wonder how much this strike is going to cost. I mean, each one of those is like half a million dollars a piece. Uh, I'm not going to do the math quickly, but I promise you it's going to be expensive. Oh, that's probably a SAM. Yes, yeah, it's going to go right by and not do anything. Good thing we use standoff weapons, because this could have been a lot harder. Now, the joke here is after our initial strike, which is going to cost us like nine F-18s, the missiles from the Russians are going to show up five minutes later and just finish the job if we missed. So it's like, oh, that's not fair. Oh, man, imagine if you were the IADS trying to coordinate this. I believe, yep, more AMRAMs. I told you guys you shouldn't have crossed into the ocean. You're just going to get slapped out of the sky. Don't do that. Ah, let's not do that. Now, if we want to have a little bit of fun, let's go ahead and reduce time for a second here. Let's grab this AMRAM. Let's go to 3D view. This is one of the cool parts of Command. All right. I finally got this working a little bit better. But, like, if I zoom out... Ah! Nightmare! What are you doing? Oh, there's one of the Sequoia 20s. Or 22s, I should say. Now, the fun thing is, let me go scoot over here. You can see uh, just how nutty this is. Keep in mind, these guys are flying nice and low to stay underneath these particular radars. Of course, that means they get to rain AMRAMs on them. Anybody who's played enough flight sims know you don't want to be below the target if you're wanting to do... Uh, you can be below the enemy aircraft if you're trying to look up at it. It's much simpler than looking down at it, even with modern Doppler set filter. What's going on over here? Oh, boy. All the F-18s doing the thing. All right, close that out. Speed of time, again, we're testing our scenario here, so we need to be studying what kind of goes on well. And again, players who micromanage like crazy, they're going to do things quite a bit differently. I want to kind of study the interactions, I want to study the losses, I want to study the difficulty. Am I having fun right now? I mean, right now, this is like, I think it's a little nutty. I think our scenario got what they call scenario creeped, where basically now you've got too many things going on in a given scenario at any given time. I think it's a big 23. Oh, I did not catch it. Oh, well, no big deal. All right, we've probably done a pretty good amount of damage over here to the Syrian AD. I'm actually a little disappointed in the SAMs. They weren't near... Uh-oh. We have two unknowns. Keep in mind, of course, there's a lot of radar calculations going on right now. 
wonder how much of the Syrian Air Force we were able to disable at this time. All right, that one got hit. Let's look at another one. At the very least, I don't think Syria's Air Force is going to be effective after this. Unfortunately, the losses are going to be so high, there's going to be so many fired generals and colonels and everything when this is all over. It's just going to be terrible. Yep, those are Rim 66s. Somebody must have got too close. Oh, Smirch is doing his thing. Those MiG-25s are pretty scary. What do we got here? Ah, Jassims. So those are penetrators. I don't think we're going to lose any BM1s. These things, by the way, are the only weapon I know that effectively, reliably will kill an S400 every time. You don't use one, use a few, but they're just so effective because they have basically no radar cross-section. I'm actually going to scroll down take a look real quickly. And da -da -da. There we go. Radar cross-section, minus 42. Wow. Yeah, you can't detect it. And we're going to go ahead and pause by accident. Continue running things. Okay, looks like uh, an S6, SA6 was my least favorite SAM system of all of the Falcon series. I've been shot down by this thing more than every SAM system combined. I think the one I've never been shot down by, I'm just trying to think real quickly, like an SA4, I don't think I've ever actually been hit by. Same thing with the SA5, it's another one you just, you just never get hit by. It's just one of those things, it's there, but it's just, I don't know, not much of a threat. It's very easy to avoid, as long as you know it launched at you, of course. And again, the SA-5s, it's a strategic system. Oh, cool. The Eurofighters are doing a wonderful job here. And they're all running out of fuel. Like, he's trying to dodge and save his life here, and he's being hunted down by this group of uh, Sukhoi 24s. That is an interesting thing to be chased down with, but unfortunately, this guy might just run out of fuel. I really wish I could back him out and get him out of there. Because he's trying to stay underneath. Oh, my gosh. Look at how many people just fired at him at once. Wow, can that thing turn. I knew that aircraft was maneuverable, but Damn. And this guy is getting chased down by something right here, too, that we can't see. So it could be a little Sam, an SA-6 or something like that. All right, it looks like our scenario is just about ready for our results check. What are these, Jassims? Yeah, those are Jassims. What's this? Is it the chemical facilities? Bam. Done. Why are you here? Oh, the B-1. Oh, my gosh. We're about to lose a B-1. Oh, no. Look at how many aircraft are chasing after him. Oh no! Run, run, run! <laughs> oh, he's gone. He probably. Oh, well, that was the most expensive, expensive, expensive thing ever. Oh, he's still going. He's still going. And this little scenario is running nice and smoothly because we finally, you know, got some of those units out of the air. Bam, 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 bam. Look how many missions. Of course, remember what I was telling you about Russia a little while ago? We picked up their A50. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and take a look. That's probably some more rims. You guys are stupid. You shouldn't have followed us all the way to Turkey. You pay the ultimate price. Dunk. And he's gone. All right, I think that's about it for our first run of this scenario. I'll go ahead and reduce time here. These guys are all going to land sooner or later. And let's see how terrible that went. So they lost some of those. They lost so many airplanes so many airplanes and if we could attack them on the ground too we could have done even more damage here let's scroll down here we have some gishes uh they went through an awful lot of those look how many sa3s they fired nice oh my gosh look at that that's probably all their sams russia lost nothing they didn't shoot anything we lost three lancers oh my gosh this is going to be difficult to explain uh a couple f18s usually we lose the most look at how few f16s we lost though isn't that incredible Cut one tornado ECR. Ugh, oh my gosh, this is terrible. Look at how many harms we went through, and that still was not enough. Because if you actually go up here, you'll notice just how many they didn't lose. And again, when you come down here, they lost five SA2s, um, one of those, six of those. But really, they didn't lose that many. But they did, of course, lose a couple of radars. And you can see they lost probably about 40 radars out of all that. So that was kind of a bummer first run. So let's go ahead and reload the scenario. Try not to save by accident. Let's go ahead and reload it back to NATO. And let's do this the right way. And this is the way that some players are going to approach your scenario. And this is the easy way to do it. So let's see here. I got shift F1. Let's go ahead and grab these. Go ahead and grab this one right here. This looks good to me. Actually, let's be very rude. Uh, okay, let's go to this one. Uh, we have 12 seconds. Uh, no need to waste. Allocate. 27. Begin the mission. And I think we won already.
<laughs> actually, we didn't. We should have launched a lot more. So uh, let's see how well that version of the scenario actually went. Let's go to losses and expenditures. So we got three out of the nine. So that doesn't surprise me. But look at how many weapons they wasted in attempting to try to shoot them down. We used 27 tomahawks for that. So uh, that didn't work. So uh, let's be cheaper. Let's be cheaper. Let's go back to NATO. Zoom ourselves back out here. Let's go ahead to this one. Let's go get up pair of B1Bs. This is all we're going to need. All right, give us a moment for them to launch. Come on. There they are. Point them at Syria. Pause. Grab this many. Um, we'll allocate two. And we'll grab this one. Allocate two. Fire. Return to base. So, uh, how are things going? And that one's destroyed. And that one's destroyed. And that one's destroyed. And that one's destroyed. That one's destroyed. That one's destroyed. And that one's destroyed. Okay. Let's see how we did as far as this scenario goes. So, we got eight of them. We got, I believe that is all of them. Yeah, that's all of them. We won. <laughs> So what I wanted to show you with this is just how you have to think about how to balance the scenario. And uh, hopefully you can see a little bit into that. And again, right now you're realizing, holy smokes, after all that, that's how easy this scenario was? It's like, that's the reality. And again, that's why you know the best weapons are the ones where you don't have to fly through this nasty air defense situation to do it. So the last thing we want to do in our scenario today is we want to go ahead and start setting up some of the events so that we actually have the ability to go ahead and score the mission and you know decide things that happen. So let's go ahead to the scenario editor. Let's go to events editor and go to events and we'll go ahead and create a new event. Uh, we'll say NATO air loss. We'll do event is repeatable in case it happens more than once. Uh, unit is destroyed. NATO aircraft lost. So we'll say NATO, we'll say aircraft, we'll say we'll do any aircraft technically. We can set it to class, we can even say specific unit. Now you could go through and create one of these for each different type of aircraft in NATO and give each one a score, but in this case I'm just going to keep it kind of generic. Any loss is a loss. Under conditions we'll go ahead and create a nice easy one. We'll do scenario has started. Go ahead and close that. Make sure after you click this, you have to actually click this button to make it work. And then we'll go ahead and create an action. Uh, lose points, create new action. Lose 100 points. Side NATO, minus 100. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and gain some points as well. This will be NATO, and we'll say 50 points. This will make sense in a minute. Beautiful. All right, close that. We'll need that one in a minute. Close that. We'll go ahead down to here. Lose 100 points if we lose an airplane. Okay, we'll go back to my event editor. Create a new one. Click on edit. We're going to go ahead and edit this one. And we're going to go ahead and create a new one. We can actually clone it. It's usually the easy way to do it. Uh, chemical facility destroyed. So then we're going to say target side Syria. We're going to say land facility. We're going to say, I think it is structure open, if I recall correctly. We'll find out in about two seconds. Hey, we were right. Beautiful. Close that. So chemical facility destroyed. So make sure you change this one here. Add trigger. Remove selected. Chemical facility destroyed. Uh, this time we're going to gain some points. Remove selected. Awesome. So the one that I want... Okay, sorry. Chemical facility destroyed. All right, that works pretty well. I'll go ahead and do that again. And then we're going to say Syria aircraft loss. Event is repeatable, obviously, because uh, you know this could happen a few times. We'll go ahead and edit triggers. We'll go ahead and clone this one. We'll go ahead and edit that. Again, cloning is always going to be a little bit quicker. Syria aircraft loss. We'll do Syria aircraft. That's it. Close that one. We'll go ahead and say Syria aircraft loss. The scenario has started. And edit actions. We'll actually clone this one. Edit, gain five points. I know that doesn't seem like much, but you decide what's valuable in your scenario. I'm not going to tell you, it's your scenario. Add action. Okay, we want to test those to make sure they work. So I'm going to save our scenario one more time. Once you start programming things, you want to be very, very cautious. Again, I'll save my scenario one extra time. Okay, so let's go ahead and test to make sure this works correctly. 
I will do a proper tomahawk strike here. We'll go grab this one, grab this one, and we'll allocate five each. That was 45 tomahawk cruise missiles. Wow, that's a lot. Again, we're just testing. Fire! Off they go. Several of them just got shot down. It happens. Looks like we're going to be relatively successful here. Again, we're just testing the scenario. Okay, so that worked okay. Let's go to group MCOM. Let's go ahead and turn on our sensors here. Declare these all hostile. It's being awfully rude of us. I know. We don't even know the guys. It's not like we've taken them out to lunch or anything. Got to know them. But we just want to test real quick to make sure that everything's working as far as our scoring goes. Let's go to losses and expenditures. We got four of them, which is kind of embarrassing, not going to lie. And we went through 45 tomahawks. So that just goes to show that it's going to be, can't get away that cheaply. Uh, let's take a look here. So we'll go ahead and go down to scoring and see how we're doing here. So we have 200 points. And we got four of those. Scoring log looks accurate. Looks pretty good to me. I'm actually going to grab my mission group here. Again, we're just testing. We're going to move them a little bit closer. Do one of these things real quickly and just kind of let my escorts uh, start firing all of their rims and their SMRs. Because we just need to test to make sure this scoring works correctly as well. Imagine being on the receiving end of that. Oh, it's so unfair when you use modern weapons correctly. And the neat thing is they can actually auto-retarget, which I always thought was neat. All right, that should be more than enough damage to test that theory. I'm also going to launch a single airplane. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, a Hawkeye. What a waste. Yeah, let's launch a Hawkeye. Why not? He can't defend himself. Once he gets airborne, I'm going to send him right into the middle of the action. Come on. Look at all these missiles. Valid strategy, by the way. Expensive strategy, but valid strategy. Maybe the real test in this mission is how can you do this mission cheaply? <laughs> All right, I'm going to launch this guy at maximum speed, medium altitude, right through the center of the enemy units. And we're going to test to see if we lose points because we lost an aircraft. Let's go ahead and move him right into the thick of it. It won't take them long to find him. Of course, with all those missiles zipping by, maybe it doesn't matter. Man, this is an expensive scenario. How come he hasn't gotten shot? Oh, there it is. Is that the one? Nope. Missed. Overshot. Look. Oh, he's gone. No. We, all right. Let's take a look to see what happened with our scoring. Just to make sure everything worked the way we expected it to. So we can see our score. Yeah. Look what happened when we lost him. So let's take a look here. Uh, aircraft. Look at all. Look at how many aircraft we shut down. Losses and expenditures. Man, this is such a cheap strategy, isn't it? All right, we have SA-3s, we have those, we have everything looks good. Uh, we can see how many ridiculous amounts of weapons we've already gone through here. But we've done a lot of damage here. Another fun thing to do, too, is you can actually order them to just do a strike. So, you know, I can sit here and I can just click on it and they'll automatically predict exactly how many they'd need. So if I want to get all the chemical facilities, I can do something like that and they'll automatically launch tomahawks. It's just like, ah, it's so cheap when you do it this way. Okay, so now where are our next steps? So at this point, the scenario is tremendously easy to play. All you have to do is get some JASMs, and you can end it pretty much right away. However, the point of this exercise is basically to show you how you can start from one end of the scenario and go all the way through to the other end of the scenario, and you kind of all the little pieces in there, how you do your little edits. As a player, as a designer, I would recommend getting rid of the B1s completely. They don't serve a purpose for you right now. The Tomahawks are interesting, but you can also reduce it so you only have five of them or something like that, in which case you're forced to do things the hard way. So that would be a great way to rebalance and make this scenario a little bit more challenging. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, last thing I like to do, let's go ahead and reopen the scenario one more time. Go ahead and open it real quickly. Is I like to add the briefing. So you know, you can come in here and you can edit briefing. A lot of people uh, destroy enemy Syrian chemical facilities. So when you do a briefing, generally people like the fancy ones when you get really, really standard. So what you can do is you can actually go online. You can type in uh, NATO briefing format PDF or something like that. And what they'll do is uh, actually not NATO. Let's see. Uh, US mission briefing format PDF. Uh, let's see. Is this the one we want? I'll know it if I see it correctly. 
Uh, is this the handout? Yes, this is it. So it'll actually walk you through what a briefing looks through, like in all the different different types that information that you want to have in it, the types of weather and stuff like that. Some people will actually use uh, templates for this particular purpose. Oh, cool. They have a whole briefing thing in here. Neat. But again, all this stuff is available at your disposal online. And one of the best places to look is other scenarios if you want to grab something. All right. Hopefully this has been helpful. This has been uh, quite a project, uh, as you probably have seen. You know, this is uh, not something you can do quickly. And I've got a lot, probably another two hours of just tweaking to try to make this scenario a little bit more difficult for the player. Because right now, it, it, it's a vacation. Unless, of course, you try to do it the hard way where you drive everybody through the middle and basically get slaughtered. Uh, one thing I will leave with, and uh, this is, again, again, these videos have been long enough, is it might not be a bad idea to give Syria some optical units. I know that sounds a little weird, but let me show you what I mean by that. So let's go ahead. This is just one quick little last thought in the back of my head. I'm going to go to Syria. I'm going to go ahead and add a watchtower. And I'm going to edit the watchtower. Sensors. Just I'm just doing this real quickly. This is something that just occurred to me off the top of my head. I'm going to add a sensor. We'll use some low light TV. Generic low light TV surveillance. Add. So now I'm going to clone this. I'm dressing shift C, by the way, not regular C. It's a copy. And now I have a whole set of optical identification platforms all the way around Syria that are going to be difficult to detect. Go ahead and save the scenario. The scenario is now ready to go. Hopefully this video series has been helpful. I know it's a long kind of rambled. I definitely left details in there. You probably didn't need to watch like going through each one of those, but it's kind of worth it to see how you can build these scenarios quickly, effectively, and have a pretty challenging thing in the end. Enjoy.